have had to deal with the cone of shame. <laughs> this is Truman. Truman got neutered and he had to have eyelid surgery. So here's the situation. Sharpays have a tendency to have their eyelashes roll into their eyes, which makes their eyes tear. And ultimately it can cause a lot of vision problems later on in life. So when we got Bitly, Bitly had to actually have one eyelid done because he's half Sharpe. Truman is half Sharpe and half Pug, but he has a lot more Sharpe characteristics. I like to tell people that he's Sharpe in the front and Pug in the back. <laughs> but anyway, he has a lot more Sharpe characteristics, certainly in his face. Truman, show everybody your pretty face as he's eating rocks. <laughs> really? Rocks? Anyway, so he had to have um, his eyelids done and they pull the uh, eyelashes back, they suture them, and then uh, he has to have his stitches out uh, not until we've got another another week of this. <laughs> so we've been through two weeks and it was not uneventful. Um, if you guys have ever had to live with a dog in a cone, you know exactly what I'm talking about. He can't get out the dog door on his own. So fortunately, we have a courtyard area out here in front. And so I can just let him out here to kind of roam and do his business uh, because he can't get out the dog door. But he um, he's doing okay with it. We, we did actually board him at the hospital for about three days, because quite frankly, I was exhausted. He was really combative and really just um, enraged. I mean, he would have these fits where he would just desperately try to get out of the cone and trying to rub his face on everything he could get to. I did call and ask for some more medication for him, a sedative, and it did help a little bit. Truman, quit eating all the rocks. You could be larger than life, bigger than the world, living out the hopes and dreams of every boy and every girl. You could fly higher than the sky, shine brighter than the stars. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. So glad you could be with us today. Just wanted to give you a couple of updates. As you guys saw last week in the bike video, uh, we did not get it done. <laughs> we needed to order some new uh, straps for the fat tires. I had ordered straps and I thought they were the correct ones, but turns out they were not. And actually the ones that we really need are unavailable, out of stock everywhere. We made a trip down to REI and a couple of bike shops and I keep shaking the table and I can't find them. So I ended up being able to order them from eTrailer. If you guys haven't checked out eTrailer, it's a great, great tool. Um, anyway, they're on their way. I don't think they're gonna be here until next week. So we are going to wait on the bike rack and we will do a follow-up with you guys and show you how the bike rack works, if we end up liking it, and how that's working out for us. A couple other updates I wanted to let you know. The RV is actually still at the dealership. We have still been going through, and you guys know what it's like when you when you need warranty work done or you need repairs on an RV, it, it, it it's time consuming. Um, it, it's funny because when we, when we took it out there and dropped it off the first time and then we had to take it back out and drop it off a second time, there are people living out there. I mean, like, I guess I feel blessed that we're currently not full-timing in it because that's where we'd be. <laughs> we'd be living at the dealership um, in the service department. Like, these people had their lawn chairs set up and a solo stove and everything. Like, they were camping. Um, but, you know, it, it's, part, it's part of the deal, right? And if you are not full-timing it, uh, do take that into consideration. You know, how are you going to get your repairs done when you need them? So, um... Uh, on that note, so the the control panel, if you guys watched our videos, the Lippert control panel, it's called One Control, and it's all wireless. Um, it operates everything remotely. It operates our slides, and it shows us 
our tank situation and it it uh, opens the awnings. I mean, like it controls everything in the RV, lights and everything. And if you saw before, we were not, so, so initially it wasn't showing whether or not the tanks were completely empty. Like a couple of the tanks were still showing full. So it wasn't reading properly. And the service tech at the dealership when we purchased it, it was tr troubleshooting that. And through doing that, um, Lippert recommended that they get a new control panel, that there was something wrong with the control panel. In the meantime, we had brought it home and we still couldn't get it to work. And I called Lippert myself a couple of times and he starts talking to me about find a control panel and get a test meter. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. no, 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 no. It's over my pay grade. So we took it back to the dealership and said, we can't, we can't get this thing to fix either. So they ordered a new control panel. The control panel came. He still can't get it to work properly. Uh, Lippert told him that he needed software updates from Forest River, which uh, I put it online and a lot of people thought that was rather odd, but I guess it makes sense if Forest River is driving the bus on their systems, then the Lippert control panel needs to recognize that RV and the control panel in it. Um, so through trying to get the software updates online, um, they determined that the, it may be corrupted as it was sending over the air. So they've now put it on a flash drive and they're sending it snail mail from Forest River to the dealership and they're going to try to up, update the, the software with, a, with a, a thumb drive. So that's where we're at. Unfortunately, you know, the process is just taking time. We had a trip planned to the Tulip Festival this year. We were leaving April 8th. I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, I think we're looking at postponing. Uh, our next trip won't be out until the end of April. But on that note, Jake and Melissa are coming in their toy hauler, my son and daughter-in-law, and they're going to stay here for a couple of weeks. I'm so excited. And we may get an opportunity to actually go RV somewhere with them. Uh, probably close by, but I'll take whatever I can get. So that's something to look forward to. Um, lots of updates with them too on how living in an RV is going for them. Um, also, uh, Easter. So Easter's coming up, you guys, and I thought this might be a fun opportunity to talk about, you know, how do you guys do holidays when you're, when you're living full time? Do you decorate your RV? How do you cook when, when, uh, basically there's, there's holidays that really kind of revolve around food, or at least they did in my family. And Easter was always kind of a big food deal. Uh, we always used to have ham. Mom would make a big casserole of macaroni and cheese. My mom made the best macaroni and cheese, ask anybody. Um, but um, how do you do it? You know, do you, do you have a potluck at the campground? Do you invite other people? Do you try to plan specifically to be at family for those uh, pivotal holiday moments? Um, how do you guys do it? What does that look like? Um, you know, do you just make new friends? Do you do it by yourselves? How does that look for you guys? Uh, for us this year, since we're not full-timing yet in the RV, um, we are probably gonna have a little quiet year this year. You know, I feel like um, taking a little bit of a break. The boys don't live here anymore. Uh, my parents are gone. And we have small family uh, here. And uh, I spent so many years cooking big meals. Uh, sometimes, you know, just a little break sounds good. I say that, but as soon as Easter gets here, I'm gonna go, oh man, doesn't macaroni and cheese sound good? You know, next thing you know, you can't make a small mac and cheese. It just doesn't happen. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but listen, you guys, if, uh, if I don't get a chance to tell you before, happy Easter. And uh, I hope you guys are all enjoying the, the lovely weather and the holidays and spring. Spring is my favorite time of year, right? If we don't see you before, don't forget to hit that like button and share the videos and subscribe. 
and uh, we're getting we're getting such a wonderful community of people. I love all the questions you guys uh, put to us. If there's anything we can help you with or any questions you can answer, you know we're going to look it up if we can. If we can find the answer for you, we will. And uh, thanks you guys for being with us. It means so much to us. And uh, we'll see you guys next week.